This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Rising Tide Startups, and my special guest is Richard Boyce. Richard, thanks for joining us on Rising Tide. Of course, Kevin. How are you? I am good. So tell our listeners a little bit about Richard. Um, a little bit about me. So I live in Sydney, Australia on the Northern Beaches. Um, I'm actually still currently a student at uh, UTS, and my startup uh, works out of the UTS Startups Incubator. Um, a little bit about my work history. Uh, I actually worked as a sales rep in Vodafone, um, moved on to more sales in a company called Oxford. Um, and I've actually been an IT trainer for, for Westpac, uh, which is a bank here for the last two and a half years ish, um, alongside with working on th this startup really, um, and education graduated high school. And I'm still actually a student, so I'm in the middle of doing my degree in IT. Um, so I'm majoring in a business side of IT, and I've got a sub-major of data analytics. Well, it sounds like you're the classic underachiever. I mean, you know, you, you just, <laughs> just spend all your time just watching Netflix or something. But, uh, yeah. I, I do I'm enjoy a good Netflix show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure after everything else is done, that's for sure. So, yeah, so tell us a little bit about the, the, the startup itself and, and how you got started. Absolutely. So my co-founder, Andrew and I, uh, we actually met in university in, in a subject that we were doing together. Um, and that was back in 2018. And he kind of had this initial impression of an idea uh, with cryptocurrency and actually being able to, to spend it in real time. Uh, back in, in the big crypto rush where everyone was really kind of getting to know Bitcoin and Bitcoin kind of came into the limelight. Um, Andrew actually made a little bit of money off the, uh, off the big a rush there yeah. and he and he kind of figured out this would be a really cool currency just to use in everyday life um, and that's where that con concept kind of came from so he kind of pitched that to me and I said I actually really like that idea that sounds great um, and then we pretty much kept in touch from there and, and one thing led to another and we pretty much uh, got together and said let's do this and I said to Andrew kind of what's the research you've done behind this and he said I've been doing a lot of networking and I've been doing a lot of, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, and I went and I met a few of the people that he'd met and we kind of kicked off really. Um, we didn't actually start in the UTS startups hub. Um, we were kind of, as you might say, working out of our garage. Oh yeah. Um, and then like all great um, founders do. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Um, yeah. So he kind of, um, said, I've been told about UTS startups and we went and, and we kind of applied for the, for the incubator and, and we got in um, and it's actually been fantastic for us ever since. Yeah. So that's kind of how we all started um, and how the, the business came to be. So for those of us outside of Australia, what, what is the, I, I'm assuming the S is for, for, is for Sydney, but is, is that true? What's, what is UTS? Ah, so UTS is actually the university that I'm attending. Um, or college, you might say. Uh -huh. uh, so it's the University of Technology, Sydney. Yes. Yeah, that's what I, I, I was. If I had to guess, that those are, that was what I was going to go with. But yeah. uh, so you guys get together, you start talking about the idea. I'm, were Were you familiar with kind of the cryptocurrency, kind of the blockchain, at least maybe in passing? You probably had heard some um, about it in metal. Yeah, and yeah. In passing, I definitely heard a few a few things about it, and and obviously with the whole rush, as I mentioned before. I looked into it a little bit and, and it had come up a few times even before the rush with it with a few friends of mine um, because it's very heavy technology based really sure. um, these digital currencies they're, they're, they're crazy um, so yeah I, I did know a little bit about it but nothing kind of compares to the amount of self research that you do um, in a startup business and then the amount that you learn and and just the amount that you kind of have to do yourself Mm. Um, to get to a point where you're knowledgeable enough to walk into a meeting with, with other people and, and know your stuff to, to take it from just an initial meeting to, okay, well, let's do business together and how can you contribute to this idea or this product? Right. I mean, uh, what a way to, I'd love the way you frame that and, and kind of, you know, unpack that. But so, I mean, I, I know a little bit about the kind of the whole blockchain idea, it just maybe enough to be dangerous, but uh, and I actually have Ethereum. I mean, I, I bought Ethereum. Oh, that's probably fantastic. Probably at the, at the wrong time, but uh, I think I've actually <laughs> I've lost money. I've heard a few stories like that. But, but 
exactly. I, I was on the yeah. wrong end of the bubble. But so when you when you launch this and give me give me before I ask the question, give me a little bit of background and just kind of unpack the the idea behind the startup itself. So what's give me your elevator pitch, you know, the next for the next minute. Just this is what, you know, crypto spend yeah, is. So crypto spend, what we what we normally ask people is, well, based off the name, what do you think of the company? And, and they normally think, oh, well, it's got to do with crypto and, and obviously spending it. And that's something that we really aimed for with our yeah. brand and image. Um, even upon starting um, the startup is we're, we're taking an approach of we're building a business, we're building a company and, and we're building a brand and an image um, for payment in, in, digital, in digital currencies. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we're developing an app um, where we are allowing our customers to essentially deposit their crypto into their wallet um, inside the app. And what they can do is they can go and they can make everyday payments with it um, through a prepaid um, card, as well as being able to pay their bills to what we call uh, pay ID and OSCO. So this is kind of like a NPP, so new payment platform. Mm -hmm. And it's very much aimed towards Australian customers at the moment. Right. Um, but of course, being a startup, we haven't launched yet, uh, but we are really kind of on a very fast roll at the moment with, uh, with the development um, side of things and the marketing side of things and, and just kind of more networking and, and get kind of getting out there and, and being made aware and letting people know that we're here. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the, my jobs, I think, as the host of, of the podcast is I, I have to try to get inside the head of those that are listening to the podcast. So I, I course, by proxy, you know, I'm asking questions for the, for the people that are going to listen to this later. But I mean, you, as you're unpacking this, there are so many questions that are, that are coming to my mind and yes. I'm really having to It's a fight. very, very big. Okay. okay <laughs> should I ask this question? Should I ask this one? But what, what have you seen is the biggest hurdle to get over the biggest obstacle in Whoa. front of, in front of this launch, because I mean, I, I can think of, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I can think of uh, just merchants that are afraid to take the currency. I can think of the volatility of the exchange rate. I mean, all That's these things. That's actually a very good question. Um, yeah. It's something I forgot to mention uh, is the merchant doesn't have to take cryptocurrency. So the best part about our system and about our platform is uh, as they spend the cryptocurrency, they're actually the merchants actually receiving AUD, mm. um, so the Australian dollar. Right. So the merchant has nothing to worry about, and this is something that we really had to consider on whether we're going to initially adopt the the factor of the merchants taking the crypto itself, or yep. whether we eliminate that, and then we because crypto in Australia is a very niche market as it is. Mm -hmm. um, so what we had to do is we had to take this idea and we had to think okay, well, we're already targeting a niche market. We don't want that to go towards another niche market of merchants accepting this currency. We, so we kind of developed our system to, to liquidate the cryptocurrency um, into the Australian dollar. Um, so the customer has nothing to worry about. And quite simply, what they do is they just spend their cryptocurrency at any point of sale, um, obviously on a topped up prepaid card, um, and the merchant receives AUD. So it's like seamless payment, online payments uh, at any point of sale even. Um, in person as well. So does it, is it like an immediate, um, like arbitrage or immediate, um, I guess, conversion from say Bitcoin to AUD? And, and is it based on whatever Not the current rate is? necessarily because uh, well, without saying too much, of course, um, yeah. to the customer, it's going to seem immediate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but it, I mean, it, in essence, it has to convert itself. Like, like if I have cryptocurrency in my wallet and it, it has mm -hmm. a certain value, you know, today's value of whatever my wallet. Yeah. The worth. volatility of crypto changes with our, with our app. Right. So Great. The, you're getting it at that price that you're spending it or converting it at. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes perfect yeah, sense. So I mean, it's, it's not like a locked yeah. in price kind of right. thing, because obviously with the volatility of the market, um, it would be a pretty bad business model if, if we locked in a price and then crypto fell a certain amount and obviously then we're, we're a bit stuck, aren't we? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and and you, you would eat the, the loss there. So is your, mm. is your business model based on like the, the sliver of percentage? Like, are you taking a, a small percentage of that transaction of that conversion or are you? Um, yes, that, that is correct. We are, we're very transparent with our, with our customers. Uh, or, or we will be, I might say. 
Um, so we give them a quoted price and that's exactly the amount that they're getting at that point in time mm -hmm. um, with the fee already deducted. So they don't really have to worry about that right. too much. Um, and it's very easy and seamless for the customer. Uh, and based off a, a few of our competitors, uh, we, we're we trying to, um, obviously being a new startup in the market, we're trying to find a nice middle ground on, on yeah. what's nice for, for, for our customers really, yeah. So what is the, what's the biggest education obstacle that you face with, with trying to uh, educate, you know, future clients of our future customers of this app? Mm, absolutely. Well, a lot of people are, the people that we're mainly targeting upon our launch um, is probably people who are already in the crypto space, who have right. a bit of knowledge about it. You yourself said you have Ethereum. Right. Um, so all these kind of people, people that have these digital assets in, in a larger sum, um, I might say. Um, so our biggest kind of thing to them is is telling them you know you can you can trust this platform you know we've got top grade security where we're ensuring you um that this is going to be a worthwhile platform for you to use and you're going to enjoy using the platform um and and the biggest thing to educate our our, our customers is to say you know this is this is a good reliable product that you're really going to love to use you know it's new to the space um it's going to be something that you know it's unlike anything you've seen before it's going to be easy to use, but you're really going to enjoy using it in a combination with your digital currencies. So if I am, if I am a potential client, uh, I'm looking at, you know, what is the benefit? Is the benefit to me that it's just ease of use or is the benefit to me that there's a real economic benefit? Like I'm getting a better exchange all of the rate above. or yeah. What, tell, yeah all, kind of walk the down the, here's the, here's why you want to do this. Okay. So, so here's why you want to do this is, what we've done is we, we've actually kind of tapped into a market where it's it's a huge market billions and billions of dollars hundreds of billions of dollars uh inside this digital market mm -hmm. and and what people normally have is they have this asset and and they use it for trading and they use it for investment but what we found is is in a lot of our research is people actually want to be able to spend these currencies and this is where that first um thing that you said just now comes into play is is the ease of use right the ease of use of these currencies. We're taking it from this, okay, you now need to go, you need to list it on the exchange, you need to trade it on the exchange. You've got to do all this kind of funny juggling stuff to even buy the crypto, sell the crypto, all the rest of that. We, we're bringing in this product into the market where we're saying, okay, well, you have it. Now you can go and spend it in your local currency. So this now allows you to, hey, why don't you go buy your next iPhone or your next Samsung phone? um with with your bitcoin why don't you go buy your your son's laptop for for university or uh, with, with your bitcoin and and it can all be done through our app which is which is the ease of use it's the convenience it's it's the not to worry about the conversion because you can instantly see the conversion you're getting through us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it, it's it's all the above really yeah are there specific uh, cryptocurrencies that you that, that work in Absolutely, the app yeah. or is it or virtually any of them so we're, we're, there are hundreds, thousands of, of digital currencies, um, you know, everything from Dogecoin to, to Ethereum, Ripple, XRP, however you want to call that. Um, so we're actually launching and facilitating the, the top five in Australia. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin and Ripple or XRP, right. depending on how right. you want to call it. Um, so, so you could, for example, I could use our app now that being said uh from my understanding you are you are in america mm -hmm. um we are an australian product unfortunately at this point in time um and that's kind of the market that we're tackling so All if right. you were here um and you could uh run your kyc know your customers you could sign up to our app um instantly and and go and spend away really yeah it looks like to me that another major benefit is you're removing one step in my transaction. I mean, you're, you're doing it for me. I'm not having to take my, my cryptocurrency and then convert it to cash and then spend it. So you're really kind of that middle transaction piece. Yeah. So, so we're, we, we've got kind of two avenues. Yes. We can remove that complete, that, that step completely. Um, but as well as that, we, we're, we're allowing our customers to top up this card in AUD and mm. then go and spend it. So yeah. there is that middle ground, but, but we're taking this step because 
it kind of gives the customer a little more uh, reassurance that, okay, I'm going to top it up and then go and spend my currency or um, uh, in the implementation of an instant liquidation at point of sale is, is definitely an option on the table. Yeah. If they're, I mean, when you say top it up, are they actually purchasing cryptocurrency or are they just putting AUD in the, in the app itself to spend later? Like a, like it's a prepaid so they're Visa putting, card. Yeah. They're putting their crypto in the app. Right. Um, in their wallet, um, inside the app. And then from there within the app, they can top up a prepaid card. But, but does that, does that just top up for, with AUD or does that top up that with whatever up their with currency AUD. is? Okay. Uh, okay. With AUD to start, I mean, obviously, you know, we wouldn't be a, a company with vision if we didn't see this going further than just yeah. Australia. But like just for now, we are very, very early stage, I might say. Um, we're, we're certainly aiming definitely for the Australian market at this point right. in time. Right, right. Yeah. So I, you know, I've obviously not asked this question well because, um, so you have in your wallet, you've got a certain amount of, say, Bitcoin, for instance, okay? Yes. So you've got 10,000 AUD worth of Bitcoin in your wallet. Yep. I want to put in 5,000 more AUD. I want to top up 5,000 more. Am I actually buying more Bitcoin? No, I guess. Or is it okay. just, I got you. just a cash account? So so we're not we're not an exchange we or we're not allowing our users to buy the cryptocurrency itself so we're very aimed towards people who already have these currencies right okay um for you to buy it you can go and you can buy it on an exchange or, or anything yeah. like that and then when you have it then you can use our app and deposit okay. it into your wallet all right yeah yeah that makes perfect sense yeah and I, it was it was my fault for not being clear in how i asked that question no, no. Because you you obviously <laughs> understand there's, the area better than i do yeah of course there's it's, sorry it's, it's probably on my end as well there's a lot of information that's, oh, uh, yeah. that gets stored and, and a lot of <laughs> repetition and repeating um on how we work and then what we are and, and all this that yeah I, I mean, I just, I love the idea behind this and just the, the, yeah, thank you. the, and it looks like another benefit. I mean, as you were kind of explaining this is, is if I'm looking at almost two currencies at one time. So if I'm looking at say the cryptocurrency and AUD together, so they are not yeah. always tied together as far as the, the, it, their, it's buying value. So, I mean, Bitcoin could go up when AUD is stable or AUD could go up, you know, as compared to, to against another currency. So Absolutely. you could almost Absolutely. play whichever one is more favorable. You could spin that out of your app, you know, whichever yes. one had the highest uh, buying power. Yeah. So essentially it, it will always be spent in AUD to the merchant. Right. So no matter which way you go about it, the crypto is going to turn to AUD. Yeah. Um, we do have, um, maybe rough plans to allow merchant adoption, but we're still very on the edge about that. Mm -hmm. We're, we're not quite sure. Mm -hmm. We need to, we need to walk before we can run. Yeah. So, yeah. But I, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking if let's say Bitcoin just takes off a, like a hockey stick, you know, increase, I mean, it, it's buying power against AUD just is continually higher. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, worth sure. more, you know, as you for convert sure. it to, to, for its buying power, but so Absolutely. yeah, as Bitcoin goes up, your the value in AUD will go up. Oh, yeah. for sure, for sure. So, how are you? What's your launch plan? What's the uh, what's kind of the timeline that you're looking at? Because I mean, you're still kind of in the pre-launch stage. Yeah, very, very pre-launch. Um, still in development. Uh, all the rest of that. Like, like I said, we were we were university students, <laughs> pretty much working out of a garage, and and we really started from the absolute bottom. Um, but. Uh, Timeline wise, we we ideally like to have a product by the end of this year. Um, ideally, um, that would be fantastic for us. Um, we're really working hard in in the development stage. We really want our customers to have a good uh, user interface experience, um, and that's something we're spending a lot of time on. Um, we've got a very small team. Primarily, it's just Andrew and I, uh -huh. um, and then we've got a few one or two developers and, and I've got a few people with me on the marketing side as well. Um, and obviously external lawyers and all the rest of that um, as a standard business model. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of timeline, yeah, like I said, ideally we'd like to have a product, uh, some form of product on the market by the end of the year. So have you, have you approached any VCs with this idea or any, any kind of venture capital in the, in the front end or angel investors and, 
Absolutely, yeah. So we, we have approached uh, VCs and, and angels and all that stuff. And, and, you know, it's all the standard pitch deck, give them the pitch and, <laughs> and you know, give them this great product. And, and, and we are in talks with, uh, with, with individuals and certain people. Um, we actually have an angel on board um, and, and he's fantastic. Um, he brings a lot of value into, into what we're doing here. But we find a lot of people that love the idea um, and obviously we're trying to build a profile for, you know, when we launch and when we do kick off, sure. um, when can we bring more people in and we're right. building this, this network that we have that, that we really love to expand as always. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you bring them on too early and you'll have to give away too much of your equity on the front end because you uh, yeah, pre-revenue. It's always a big concern as well. It is definitely yeah. for sure. So what, what do you envision? I mean, what's kind of in your, in your mind for the next three to five years? What will this look like? What will the whole blockchain, cryptocurrency, we're spending cryptocurrency just like it's, it's, it's you know, cash. Um, what do you yeah. envision this is going to look like? I envision the world eliminating cash at some point in time. Uh -huh. um, I envision, uh, obviously, new currencies are going to come in and it's all going to be, you know, digital currency. I envision crypto spend having this brilliant use case for, for travel, you know, so in no matter which way you go, um, it's going to always be a generalized currency that can be liquidated to you know, AUD or the British pound or the Euro or the US dollar, you know, so it's a terrific use case for travel, yeah. these digital currencies at the moment. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, when we, or if we get everything right, um, we can supply this product to to customers on a on an international level, where they're able to go, you know, feel safe and reliable with their digital currencies, and they can spend it when they travel, um, or even just in everyday life. And that's where this kind of payment platform is going to come into this normalized world mm -hmm. as the world kind of adapts into these into this space. Do you, do you have, I mean, I would imagine you almost have to give people access as a client. I have to give you access to my wallet. Is that, is that part of the kind of the interface with the app? So we, we issue you your, your, your own wallet mm -hmm. and, and it's yours. Um, obviously the, the amount of money that you put in there um, is, is, is up to you. Um, but, but, the, the beauty of us is is the wallet that we that we issue you when when you download and sign up to the app it's yours it's completely mm -hmm. yours it's it's as much yours as your phone is yours you know so so that's that's another thing as as much as your physical wallet and the money you put in your physical wallet is the exact same thing so how much of the of the development of the app is spent on the actual interface and, and customer experience and the and the mechanism of the app versus the security behind you know making sure that these wallets are secure and they're there's the w cyber without side. a doubt yeah without a doubt security is is the biggest concern um because it doesn't matter how good the app looks no one's going to use it if it's not secure right yeah so without a doubt security is is what is our top priority, our top concern in in giving customers this this reliability and this safety that that they can use the product and and be mm. um be happy and and safe with the product. The whole user interface side comes a part of it when we go okay, well you you know your pro your you know your currency secure. You you're happy to use us um and our app. Um, here's, uh, here's the, the rainbow sprinkles on top of the ice cream. This is the really mm -hmm. nice, cool extra perk that you have is that the app is actually really user friendly. It's a great look and it's, and it's nice on the eyes. I, yeah, I, I mean, that is, that's a hard balance to achieve. And I mean, if you guys, it's pull incredibly out, hard to achieve. Yeah. I would, I applaud you for it. And I love the fact that you're kind of <laughs> thinking you. about that on the front end, you know, the, the whole idea that it's not just how do we make it functional and safe, but we are, you know, it needs to be aesthetically pleasing. It needs to be, you know, uh, easy absolutely. to use and yeah. stuff like that. So it's, it's like the whole picture, but I know that you're, you're kind of, you know, your pre-revenue, your pre-launch, um, but what are, what are two or three lessons that, you know, since you, you guys first started this, what are two or three really key mm. lessons that you kind of, man, I wish I'd have known this when we started that I had to learn the hard way that you think would be beneficial to other people that want to want to kind of launch their own ideas. 
Absolutely. Um, and this isn't just talking in, in, in our space either. So this is just in right. the startup space in general, um, is, is networking. You know, it's, it's who, you know, it's getting to know people. It's the ability to, to talk and communicate your idea to an extent where you're almost getting people excited. You know, you're, you're, you're getting them in, but also the ability to take in what they have to say, because if you're talking to someone with, 20, 30 years experience in, in the industry or business that you're going into, that is extraordinarily valuable. Yeah. You know, absolutely. so it's, it's, it's who, you know, and it's, and it's the way you network with people when you, when you have this idea and, and you're starting this, this idea um, to think of another thing, I'd probably say uh, the ability to adjust because things will change. You know, you'll see, you'll see a very straight road and, and, and you'll start running and you'll start, you know, sprinting down this straight road. And then all of a sudden there's a right turn and then you'll reach a U-turn and you'll go back 20 meters. And it's like, you know, you have to have the ability to, to take hits and, and be able to stand up again and go, okay, that happened. How can I learn from that? How can I get up and move on? And that's a very hard thing to get used to. Mm. Um, and it happens depending on obviously what your idea is. It can happen a lot. And that's something to be aware of. Um, well, I wish I'd been more aware of um, how many times you get knocked back. Um, so that's something else I'd, I'd probably say. I, mean, I love that idea. The, the idea that it's, it's never a straight road. It's, it, they're going to be bends and Absolutely. turns. And not only that, you are going to, it's, sometimes you're going to run into like a roadblock and you actually have to go backwards for a while before you can go forward. Again. Absolutely. So, what would be, and uh, that's also what helps deliver a good product. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that's the kind of the whole idea behind almost the MVP idea, you know, the, the minimum viable product and, and launching yeah. lean and, and adjusting on the fly. But is there, is there one thing that you can identify that was the biggest learning lesson, the biggest obstacle you, you ran into, you know, from the time you started till now that you, you just, it keeps you up at night. You're going, that was such a bad day right there that I just... You know, oh, what can just I say? Like a ton of bricks. Uh, we, we get a yeah, the crypto market is very volatile, so we mm. get a lot of uh, we get a lot of days where we're going. Okay, it's a little bit down today, or oh, great, it's up. Um, anything like that. Obviously, um, we as a company want to stay very compliant. Um, so there's a lot of. Uh, compliance so there are some things where I walk into a meeting and they'll say what about this and I don't know anything about that um, and it could be anything from uh, something small to something moderate and then I'll have to go away and I have to really research that yeah. and I'd say within 12 hours I'll contact them again and go yep I know everything about it that's how we're going to do it um, everything like that hasn't been anything really crucial on the development side of things it's more been um, marketing Mm -hmm. especially um is okay well that's your customer profile wouldn't it be better to do something like this i'll go oh okay so that'll keep me awake at night and, and i'll go and, okay so it's all these kind of new things that are brought into light um in terms of especially marketing because like i said it's a very niche market mm -hmm. yeah, yeah ab absolutely i mean it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, I, I showed how how ignorant I was of blockchain and and cryptocurrency. I had a, a guest on that literally just the episode just launched this week, um, a guy named uh -huh. Victor Zhang, you know, and he okay. was talking about like the blockchain and and I, I I immediately default when I hear blockchain. I immediately think of cryptocurrency. That's that's it's virtually the whole Absolutely. universe Everyone of does, blockchain. But that's it's its own technology of. as well. Yeah. It is. And he, he expanded my vision on, you know, the, just the possibilities of just blockchain and, and technology Absolutely, and what can yeah. be done. So it's, it'd be interesting. I wanted to have our listeners listen to both of these episodes together because it, it gives a, a real good, you know, comprehensive picture about the whole crypto side of things. And, and it's such a, a relevant yeah. topic, you know, of today to, uh, to really talk about. It is, I think you're right. It's certainly at the forefront. Yeah. You are certainly on the on the cutting edge for sure. But how do you how do you think the uh, the current like coronavirus the uh, the current COVID nineteen <sighs> situation that we're facing how has that impacted cryptocurrency and and maybe your your business specifically? Um, I'll, I'll put this in two parts. How has it impacted cryptocurrency? Um, obviously, it's been more volatile. 
um, it, it fell a, a decent amount, or Bitcoin in particular fell a decent amount. Uh, as this was all kicking off and starting, it seems to have evened out a little, little bit. Um, so it, it's certainly impacting the economic market in every direction, as, as we probably all know. Um, so cryptocurrency is involved in this, in this economic market um, and, and it is getting hit um, pretty hard. Uh, so that's something that obviously we were a bit worried about, but it seems to be kind of coming, coming out of it a little bit, which is, which is very good news for us. Yeah. Um, as a startup business itself, um, I've, got a, I've got a terrific uh, marketing team behind me. Um, they're getting tasks done on time still, even working from home. Uh, we're running Zoom meetings um, and everyone's contributing and, and putting forward ideas on how we can adjust um, during this time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, obviously, it's very different working from home all the time. Yeah. Uh, I know not seeing Andrew for for a few weeks is is obviously a bit of a change because I'm used to seeing seeing my co-founder every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, there's an adjustment there in that. Um, we actually have a podcast studio at uh, at UTS Startups, so I wouldn't be in in a everyday room. Andrew and I would probably be together, you know, recording this podcast uh, with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, that's everything changes. You know, you're not in an office environment; you're sitting at home, and you know, like like you said, you've got you've got Netflix in the in the living room, and you've got everything else going on, and you've got family running around you, and, and all yeah. the rest of that, obviously. Um, so there's just there's so much difference and especially with a startup, you've got to really have a passion. You know, you do what you love in a startup and, and you, it's like a baby. So you really can't leave it alone. Um, especially even at times like this. And, and that's something that COVID-19 has really been testing, testing Andrew and I and, and our team, especially um, is like really sticking to targets and, and hitting certain, certain tasks and still focusing on, on the big picture. Um, with everything going on around, as I'm sure you're aware, it's very yeah. hectic. Yeah, it's. And it, I mean, it's affecting companies all over the globe. And I, I mean, I have a personal theory that that we will do business differently on the backside of this. I mean, globally, I believe I think so too. Companies yeah. will be more m- remote. They will, you know, I, I think if anything, this will reinforce the need to look at a different type of pay plan, a different type of currency, a different type of transaction absolutely you know so i think i think it's very necessary yeah so well man is there anything that we haven't touched on that uh you'd like to just wrap us up with today as as uh we're want to want to honor your time because like you said you you got to go take care of the baby (laughs) (laughs) absolutely if you if you're very interested in our product if you're any viewer in australia or even internationally and, and you're interested in our product you can feel free to go check out our website um, just search uh, cryptospend.com.au. Um, um, we've got, we're on all the socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn even. Um, this is where I believe you got in touch with me, Kevin. Yeah. Um, you know, just feel free to check us out. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, please challenge us, <laughs> um, if you will. Um, we love a good challenge. It, it almost uh, assures our customers that they're going to be in safe hands when we do eventually get this up and running. There's, there's wisdom in many counselors, that's for sure. So it's, uh, it's a, what a good way to wrap it up today. And I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to follow the kind of the progress of your launch as you, as you, absolutely. We, had, you know, we'd love next to have year you or whatever. Um, yeah. But uh, Richard, awesome. thank you for just taking the time to, you know, just really share your experience and, and kind of give us an eye, kind of a, a sneak peek into what crypto spend may be in the next few years. And, and of who course, knows? Thank you very much. This may be pre unicorn, you know, podcast episode right here. For <laughs> one, you, so. one can only hope. One, one can, can only, only hope. hope. So, <laughs> Richard, thanks again for just taking the time and just really helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Appreciate your help of tonight. Course. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Not a problem. Thank you.